to introduce, I'll introduce you. So Maria Fox, yeah. Um, and you have lost a significant amount of weight with the help of Lumen. That's right. That's amazing. So we're going to get into all the little nitty lifestyle things that you've done, because I think one of the big misconceptions I see with Lumen is people think they just breathe into it, like sucks the fat out or something. It's <laughs> some magical thing. You have to yeah. do some work, but it's not, you've kind of proved that it's not that hard. It's, or at least in your case, it's consistency because people do different things and people are successful with different things. But I want to really talk about what you've been successful thing. So if you could start off with how much weight you've actually lost with Lumen and from what time frame? Okay, so I started, I knew that I needed to lose weight after my 50th birthday in September. I'd, I'd been really, I'd lost a lot of weight at the beginning of my 40s. I'd done a low fat, low calorie diet. That was, that did play to a genetic predisposition that I had around sensitivities to fats, but it wasn't really very sustainable long-term because these low calorie diets don't help with hormone regulation, et cetera. So um, I saw the Lumen thing and I'm a big cyclist and I, I saw that Chris Freem was on some of the marketing actually, which was a bit appealing to me. And I thought, wow, that's really clever that you can tell you what you're burning for fuel. Uh, and because at this stage I'd hit that hormone place in my life as a, a female, you know, a 50 year old woman, yeah you're the most difficult yeah phase group of people females generally are yeah. smaller hormonally challenged yeah it tends to be more difficult this more it is more difficult so it was becoming very difficult and anything I tried to do in that period leading up to being 50 you know I wanted to actually be at the weight that I wanted to be by the time I was 50 but I hit the perimenopause I had acute systems in that I had acute stress at work I ended up in a kind of chronic fatigue space um, but around that time I'd seen Lumen advertised and I thought I'd like to try this. Um, and so can I, go can on. I interrupt. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt a lot. Yeah. Did you ever think bullshit on it? I, I tell you what I thought. I thought, well, you got 30 days to send it back. Okay. If, okay. If it really isn't, you know, doesn't work or, and I also thought, um, it won't, it's not going to, the device is not going to make me lose weight. The device is going to be a tool that's going to help me get on the right track to lose yeah. weight in a healthy way. And I also knew that the device wasn't solely for weight loss, which also appealed to me because okay, of all the fitness stuff that I like to do anyway. So I thought, oh, well, it's worth a try. You know, you could pay to go to a swimming club and lots of those swimming clubs are great. But to be quite honest with you, they're just calorie deficit. They don't take into consideration the other factors and they aren't sustainable long term. And what I liked about Lumen was it was looking at overall health versus just uh, uh, weight loss. And it was looking at metabolic flexibility, which I was really interested in because of the DNA tests I'd done previously and, and the sensitivities that I already knew I had genetically. So, you know, if I compare me to my younger brother, he's got the same color hair. And that's about it. We've got the same colour hair, but he's as skinny as a rake. He was the other sporty one in the four of the four children in the family, really sporty. And yet, you know, me, I've always battled with gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. And if I have any periods of inactivity, weight would just pile on me. Now, some of that was definitely to do with nutrition and stress related, you know, the appetite control and what you end up eating. Yeah. But it wasn't all. It wasn't all about that at all. So, so okay, yeah. Okay. Me, but I, ha I haven't answered your question. The question you oh, asked God, was, we'll how much? How much weight have you lost? Well, yeah. I've lost over forty-two pounds with Lumin, and in Four. total, I've lost forty-five. So I, I lost forty-five. Maybe, yeah, forty-five since so September. Forty-two since October so when Lumin la landed. So the people who are using the metric system. That's a twenty-kilo weight plate. It is. It actually you, you walk that. a mile with that yeah. in your hand. It's serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's I took a, a picture of all my weights plates the other day and went, I've lost this much weight. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just insane. Uh, we've got like a 20 kilo weight west and you know, you just do a two mile walk with that. You feel it. It's, you know, it tires you out. You know? Or a nine mile climb in Mallorca on a bike. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, go away. That's just, 
that's too much. So I, I was going to interrupt before. I was going to ask. So with this periods of inactivity, would you describe yourself as a like a lazy or an inactive person? No, absolutely. And it, no. So you're quiet because I'm, I'm. I'm lazy unless I do stuff. Like I, I've got no problem doing stuff. I just really good at doing nothing. Okay. Which, like, no. And I'm really good at not moving. I'll just like hold the same position for an hour. It's not a problem. No, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. But actually, that actually played into the stress uh, kind of machine because I was on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go. And I have just read this book, Rushing Woman Syndrome, and I was definitely the rushing woman. And that messes all your hormone system up. It is just like the worst recipe for. Yeah. And then. So my thing with luminous when like. For people who don't know, you measure a one and a two, you're burning fat. You measure three, it's kind of 50, 50, four or five. You're more into the carb yeah. zone. I find if I get up in the morning and I'm a four or five rare five these days, but a four, I find. I call it coming up or coming down. Sometimes going up into four, I feel great because it's like, woo, carbs, I feel great. But when I'm coming, like I'll be a four and I'll be like, Ugh. I know if I wait an hour, I'll be a three. Yeah. I know if I wait another hour, I might be a two because it's coming down. But there's like a, why don't I just make myself a sandwich and then I can go back up. And then, and then you're, you know, and then when you look back at your calories, you're like, oh, I was over. I was over. So I find this going up and going there but if I wake up on a one or two I am I don't need food I don't need and maybe take a coffee but like I'm good but if I wake up on a four I'm hungry and I, I and, and you can you predict the number you're going to be on the day say 80 percent of the time yeah probably 80 percent of the time um the really interesting thing is the hormone balance certainly as a, a woman because your hormone even if your your nutrition's right your hormones can really affect what your score yeah. is yeah and especially with this the cycle like lumens added that in for yeah, it has it has in it for and women it, and it, it's good i guess it the problem is that a lot of women don't have regular cycles and i didn't have a regular cycle until i went on hrt back in january so i lost weight without hrt and then i've been on hrt since january um, and I don't think, and people think that if you're on HRT, you gain weight. I, I would say opposite. I think that if you're on HRT, you're actually getting levels of progesterone again, which have dropped. And actually progesterone is yeah. quite important in fat burning. So I understand. So um, yeah, it's a mother hormone. So it can become, ah, so you get right. like normal estrogen and normal testosterone after because you're not making those. So everything's like on a, on a come down and people, people, because like boys and girls, when they go into puberty, girls get this massive influx of estrogen which kind of puts fat around the the hip right. and boots and stuff and guys get testosterone which burns fat and builds muscle that's why uh, dudes are like the testosterone but the balance is also yeah. important because they they do more than just hey i'm gonna shove fat here and i'm gonna build muscle there they have like a and, and also testosterone itself makes effort feel good so you get a lot of these kind of ex-army jack dudes who are like you just need to work harder yeah because you got nor abnormal levels if they're not dosing themselves they have abnormal levels of testosterone yeah. and they always have you know they're the kid at 13 with a full dark beard you know yeah, yeah, yeah. they're that kid and they're like yeah because effort feels good for you sir but for the rest of us maybe just normal doesn't feel good no that's right it's not necessarily rewarding for a lot of people yeah so yeah so this so, leads me on to my next question, which is, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say there about predicting. I, uh, I, I think most days I can. Sometimes when I'm between, sometimes I, I actually do a breath on wake up as well, because I okay. like to see what I am when I wake up. And as long as I haven't moved around too much, quite often that will be a good, you know, if I literally just lean out of bed and do my looming breath, I've, brought, I've woken up with a two and then a one, you know, within okay. five minutes. But then sometimes... If I wait, so I do my wake up breath and then I'll blow 20 minutes later and it's gone up. Now I know from a test that I did recently, adrenal gland test, that my cortisol spike is really high in the morning. I'm quite at the top end of the range. And the woman actually, yeah. when we talked about it, she said, do you find it a bit hard to get going in the morning? And I do. And she said, that's probably why your cortisol is, is more elevated. And sometimes that's... it takes nearly an hour for it to 
come back to Damn. probably that In, way. Interesting. I was just going to ask that. Are you like a out of bed? Because I'm no. <laughs> now with using Lumen and kind of rebalancing myself, I'm sharp in the morning. I'm like I don't get. Yeah, I don't get an alarm clock. I'm just I'm out of bed. And oh I'm no, on I'm, it. I I set an alarm now because I've come back to work. Well, kind of going back on this face yeah. transition, but I've set an alarm as a just in case. But yesterday morning, as long as I go to bed at a good time. I generally wake up between eight to nine hours after I've gone to bed. So I woke up at six yesterday. Great early workout before I go to work, which is, you know, kind of helpful. But I think I'll let you go on to ask me the other questions, but we'll talk about stress on the body because that's a really key one in the whole weight loss. Yeah, I, I think like for people who are using the lumen, just you can kind of figure out where your where your cortisol, like you're taking the breath the second you get up because the cortisol hasn't hit yet and the cortisol for people who don't know releases blood sugar into into yeah. the body so all these guys that are like keto 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 it's like you die with blood sugar in you you have blood sugar just because you're producing ketones doesn't mean there's there's a yeah, like right. carbohydrates in the body and all your muscle can become carbohydrates or can become glucose in the bloodstream so yeah. i think the metabolic flexibility and just working yourself like a normal human rather than taking yourself to these extremes great if you want to go into ketosis and you get something out of it awesome i'm, I'm all for do you but yeah i'm i'll take my breath and i'll be like i take about 30 to 40 minutes because yeah i i feel i've got an above normal cortisol but it comes down i just need yeah. a little yeah and that, it's little... usually like that for me i mean yesterday morning was good uh woke up in fact yesterday morning i woke up and i only got a, a three when i woke up but it had dropped back to a two within 40 minutes. So it just varies, you know, and that's the other thing I just think is so amazing about the body. You know, people go, I love it in the looming community because people go, oh, is anybody else finding this? Is this how it works for you? But we are all so unique. And what is right for Maria isn't going to be right for Angus or Jenny Absolutely. or the new, new user. You've got to work with your unique makeup and find out what works for you because your hormone regulation your nervous system is your nervous system and it's been filled with years of processing and experiences and everything else that makes your nervous system what it is now i mean yeah 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 and i'm not living this life or that life you know so like someone burns the toast this end of the world for one person i'm yeah. like chill i'm chill with that it's cool Absolutely. you know and even if you are chill with that you don't know what's happening in the body just you know you're not always like ah, i'm stressed you're not always crazy you know That's like sometimes fine. you just stress yeah. and you're like now i really want a cake you know, <laughs> you know? And, and and i find like if i find i'm like really craving something i, I can normally tell that's me dropping down a level so i've got like two options fast it out or do some low intensity exercise yeah. i find high intensity exercise i have to prep for that or higher intensity exercise i have to like just because i'm a four doesn't mean i'm ready if i feel i'm coming down i need to like yeah ram some carbs down me to yeah. to, to yeah. boost that and I, and I i almost think of the carbs as rather than having the blood glucose in the body what i'm wanting is to drive that sympathetic system yeah up and, and get myself like oh my god you're gonna get chased by a bear and it's, you know <laughs> doesn't matter you know doing squats and deadlifts or right in the bike card it's like i think psychologically it helps oh i have fuel it might not even be digested but the brain yeah. is so yeah. powerful yeah, that as long as you think as long as you think you're fueled yeah. you're fueled yeah. you know so so we're, we're sort of mini covered stress there so there's like three kind of big components maybe you're great maybe we could add more to it but you know the stress component that you have to take care of because that affects your your appetite and your energy levels and your output you know if you feel like i don't want to do anything all i want to do is eat cake well your calorie deficits disappeared if you want a massive weight loss <laughs> like you've had yeah um and you've also got exercise and you've got nutrition sleep which one do you want to well sleep is, sleep is is the other huge 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 one yeah i kind of lump it in with stress yeah, or, yeah. Or, or what i should say is you have seven recovery windows per week which are your sleep yeah. it's it's like my young lads i'm like it's the most anabolic thing you can do the young lads that i train because it's like you just use buzzwords like anabolic and it's like oh, i'm gonna get huge yeah sleep you're gonna get huge <laughs> that's all they're interested in yeah. so sleep is absolutely monstrously huge but you sleep like five million hours a night you're doing well, okay 
I having had the kind of burnout thing, I um I slept for the first three months, nine, nine, ten, eleven hours, like night after night after night and that because I'd read a book or read some of a book a few years ago called uh, why we sleep by Matthew Walker Walker yeah yeah um I knew that actually that was the best the body body's way of repairing itself both brain and physically so I just it's huge I just let my body do that and I do still have occasional 10 hour jobs if I'm really yeah. tired but I just think well you know if I can let my body get that recovery that's that's got to be the most important thing so yeah sleep has been has been really key sleep sleep is huge and if you don't want to read his book he's on a gazillion podcasts is where it? he okay yeah he breaks down there's a joe rogan one that's really good it's three hours it gets really in depth and it's just joe rogan going what wow what wow <laughs> you know it's because it's just like it's basically the yeah. number one performance enhancing thing you can yeah. do yeah so okay. so sleep so so sleep super yeah. important that's number four on the list okay. so nutrition I, I really want to know what you're eating and how you're eating because you said before you did a low fat diet but lumen kind of I don't want to say it's low carb because my carb servings are all right I'm yeah I, don't, I never have less than 100 grams a day um I, yeah so, or yeah, yeah I'll let, sorry, I'll carry on. The nutrition side so I think there's a few things in context. I think that the Western diet, well, certainly in the UK and probably most of Europe and the USA, the diet is overpopulated with carbs and then it's overpopulated with bad carbs as well. So, and, and bad fat joined together. And bad fat and joined together. Yeah. exactly. So I think our whole kind of ecosystem, our bodies have, have, have gone through probably a lot of inflammation, a lot of stuff that, you know, d doesn't really help us. I knew that I had a sensitivity. Well, I knew that I had a high sensitivity to fats and I had a high sensitivity to refined carbs. So, you know, at the beginning of this, it was a bit like, great, I've, I've actually, I'm not in a great place with either sort of fuel type. So I've been very focused on eating good carbs. So whole grain products, n nothing, ref as little refined carbs right. as possible. And then I say that, I, you know, I have the odd treat fiber one is the main kind of odd treat before although i've discovered it's, it's okay it's what 90 calories yeah it's not a, a, big, bar. It's not a big deal it's, not... it's just something and it's a lot of fiber there is a lot so... of fiber in it so that was one of my kind of staple little snacks i guess in the early days um but i just try and keep to that kind of dna recommendation for me which was try to keep your diet no more than five percent of your daily intake with refined carbs and i've actually grown to like a lot of food that i probably wouldn't have eaten before um i like oat bran i like wholemeal pita bread i've just gone to gluten free on that because uh, of the consultation i had around my gut balance and that's just to get gluten out of the diet for six months um I like whole grain rice. I've started eating plant pasta, uh, which is really nice, really high in protein, really high in fiber. Um, potatoes, normal sort of vegetables, fruit. Uh, so all really good foods. And I would say, I mean, yesterday I did go a bit crazy with my first day back at work. I ended up over eat, overeating protein yesterday, which I've never really done. I'm on 133 grams of yeah. protein. Um, I've never struggled to hit the protein. I've had a good protein supplement that I get from the States. Uh, which I really like and I like which it. which brand just to name drop it um, biotrust.com and okay. they're really good and the shipping isn't expensive and it's all clean stuff they do a one powder that's 20 grams with two scoops and only two grams. And is that plant-based or is that a whey no that's a whey based uh two okay. grams two grams of carbs in the in with the 20 grams of uh, protein and then their other one is 24 grams of protein and four grams of net carbs, four grams of fiber. But I love their protein stuff, but I'll often have a protein shake with chia seeds, flax seeds, um, pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Uh, so I mix and match it. Often I've had cooked breakfast with yeah. spinach and mushrooms and, you know, yeah. smoked and poached eggs. I, I have never in the whole six months, this is one of the things that I just have to say, I have never been hungry. And I probably yeah. eat more times a day than I ever did before and eat more, you know, at more regular intervals. So I probably eat between eight in the morning and two. I've probably had at least three meals by then, you know, whether there's a protein shake in the mixer, but I've had yeah. 
decent breakfast. I, I, I think that's so important that the stomach is amino acid. So it, proteins, it's, it's amino acid searching. So kind of like if it's not finding those amino acids, it's hunger. Yeah. Hunger. No. You shove a protein chicken and it's like, oh, I'm not oh. hungry anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. it's like, yeah. So the, so the food's been really easy. And then I, all I've done with the, you know, because people, when they first start, they say things like, oh, no, how am I going to manage? You know, I don't know what the day is going to be, whether it's going to be a low carb or a high fat or, well, it is high fat if it's low carb, but, or a low fat, yeah. a high carb day. What am I going to do? And I just say, plan your protein, plan your protein, and then be flexible with what carbohydrates and what fats you're going to add to that protein mix. Uh absolutely what i do i'm even worse than you and i i've had zero weight loss and really going for zero well i've had i doing different I, I, i've done experiments <laughs> and stuff but what i do is like i'll kind of have like plan my protein so i have like at least three protein dumps yeah. a day and then i have that with salad and then i just have that every day and then i'll have like my carbs sometimes a bit naughtier so it's <laughs> like hey if, if i can have egg if I can have extra carbs today, I'm going to just have whatever I want, That's you know? Good, I, and then if it's a low carb day, I don't miss it. Cause I know there's another one coming yeah. tomorrow. It's cool. So I'm like, I'm not okay. And like I say, I've like, I don't get less than hundred grams of carbs now. Cause when oh. I do go over, I just put it into Lumen that I go over. So now it's like, Hey, you still woke up with two, so We'll give you a bit more carbs. So if you're honest with Lumen, it will. Oh, kinda, I didn't know that. Uh, it will up your carbs. So people oh. are like, oh my God, I went over my carbs. But oh no, I tell the truth. Have, I do tell yeah. Them. It's like, oh, it told me to have three portions of carbs, but I had nine, but I'll just put in three. And then Lumen's like, well, you're a four. But if you yeah. told it you were a nine, it would be like, well, of course you were a four. You have nine I portions. I, I didn't know that it did that. I knew they said to me that the they that they they had told me that basically the allocation is based on your breath measurement. So yeah. I, I know that's the case. You get a bit more if you blow a one than if you blow a two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. But I don't know. I haven't ever, I haven't ever lied with it. I mean, I've never said, oh, I've had only one carbon of it, add six. I do. Yeah, so do put it don't in. lie to Lumen. Just tell it what you <laughs> had. If you didn't count, say I didn't count. I mean, the breath measurement, whether you get a one, two, three, or four isn't based on what you ate the day before. It's based yeah. purely on that breath in yeah. that moment. And it is just a snapshot. It is. Uh, like this morning, I blew a three, but my son was fighting with yeah, the yeah. cat. And like, this cat's crazy. Yeah. So I just waited two seconds and did it again and got a two because I knew I wasn't a three. I knew I wasn't a three. I was definitely lower. It was just that that moment was like, and I could feel my heart pounding because like this cat could just attack you. It's crazy. Okay. okay so nutrition kind of covered so plan your plan your protein um eat plenty of veggies you're pretty good yeah loads i mean veggies and stuff. broccoli i mean i've <laughs> i eat certain things i go to costco every week and i buy a big bulk of certain things spinach broccoli mushrooms raspberries because they are high fiber fruit quite low in sugar, sugar and really yeah. nice with cream and on a day where you've allowed fat, why not have cream? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just planting those vegetables around and then little salad potatoes that they do there. I, I use them quite a bit as a one portion of carbs in the evening. So, so I don't have, I generally try and have lower carb in the evening. I try and eat as many carbs as I can during the okay. day and then have less carbs in the evening. And you find that better for your sleep? Yeah. I, I, I mean, as long as I don't eat too close to when I go to sleep, I sleep fine. I mean, in the how, end, how, God, how long apart do you space your last meal and your sleep? Uh, I try and eat, but by, by seven o'clock or before seven o'clock, and then I'll be going okay. to bed by half past. Last night it was seven o'clock, but some nights it's half past five, six o'clock. Um, okay. And then and then I'll be going to bed at half past nine, ten o'clock. Okay, so that's that's okay. How long do you fast per day well you... that's a, yeah so and that's a good question because there's a load of people on the that are quite obsessed with intermittent fasting um and i think that that's it's good and it does you know there are some real health benefits around intermittent fasting but you have to find what is right for you and filling out a questionnaire online is not going to tell you what is right for you in terms yeah. of fasting the only thing that's going to tell you 
is how actually the Lumen device starts to give you those breath measurements because I found that I can I can actually be a one. I've been a one before I've gone to sleep <laughs> at night, which yeah. is great because usually that means that I'm definitely going to wake up the next morning unless I have a bad night of dreams. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wake up with a one or two in the morning. But um, I, I generally no longer than eleven to thirteen hours. That's kind of my window. <clears throat> I'm I'm sort of the same. I'll do. 11 hours on a on a quote-unquote bad day where it's just you know I've just been caught short and I'm like yeah. working and I'm like you can eat now or you're eating at two yeah. you can eat eight in the morning your next slot to eat is two so make your choice Angus um <clears throat> and also depends on when I take that lumen breath but yeah I'll, I'll I'll go between 11 hours and 16 hours I'm again the more metabolically flexible you are I'm really like I'm like Oh, could do with something to eat, but I'm cool till two o'clock, and that's a uh, half eight will be my last meal normally. Right, and that's, and I just don't find it, yeah, a, like a like a bother. So I, the other thing I do as well is in the evening I I do generally have some sort of treat, sweet treat, and I um I've recently invested in these keto bombs, which are absolutely to die for, delicious dark chocolate with no net carbs in. It's all I, oh no, zero point eight grams of net carbs. Yeah. I've got a product you might like, which is going up there called Keto Fuel, and made by a company called Ape Nutrition. They're down okay. in Exeter, I think, or Essex, or Devon, I think they are. Um, and they're delicious. Are they? they are yeah, so nice. So I, I'll grab one of those in, in the morning with, with a coffee, and that's great. They're just high fat, 80% fat, 10% protein, yeah. and 10% carbs. They're delicious. They're like 350 <laughs> calories, but it's oh, like... Uh mine are only 70 <laughs> all right i i class i class mine as a meal but sometimes i'll cut it in half and have half yeah so i can have half and half but i can class that as breakfast that's right. that'll be yeah. so like and then when i do my lumen breath after i'll call it a keto fast yeah because i have eaten it's still 350 calories angus you know oh, <laughs> like wow. you still had food you have three slices of toast for the same calories yeah um so that's it so now on to exercise yeah um which i'm super interested because you do zone two zone two has been like out forever there's like phil mathetone was really like big on like zone two and this kind of nose breathing and it's only really come across my window since december and it's been a game changer it's been that one component missing because i would do loads of walks but i wouldn't do anything i would i would skip straight from zone one and it would be like three four or like you know max heart rate for two minutes and oh didn't i do well no he didn't <laughs> so you do zone two because you're like a cyclist cyclist what kind of watts are you putting out in your zone two um so i think my average watts this morning for the whole ride was 130 which okay. is in my zone two in terms of my ftp actually um cool so when my FTP is around 210, it was 230, but as I lost weight, I could <laughs> on the indoor bike, I could, I was struggling. I was starting to feel like I was really dying. So your FTP was was 210 or is 210? Sorry, it's 210 at the moment. It's around 210 at the moment. Um, and FTP is functional threshold power. power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of max you can hold for 20 minutes. An hour. No, an well, hour. No, it's based on an hour. Hour. Um, but the tests that you do are usually either a three minute test, which is not very predictive, but you add a formula to that, a yeah. 10 minute test or a 20 minute test. Um, so, and the 20 minute test is, um, the 20 minute test t you have to do in a 45 minute kind of session as it were. So, yeah. but then it, there's a calculation that then works it out that what your FTP would be then for an hour based on that 20 minute test. So 210 is where I'm at okay. at, at the moment, which is fine um, because obviously my weight has come down. So my power to weight ratio is a lot better cool. have to look that up. Yeah, that would, that would go like 40 pounds different. You can, you can, you can afford to drop yeah. a few watts because yeah. you must be so much faster on the bike. In the yeah, real world. I am. I've gone up. I've yeah. gone up. My, I'm not back to, I'm not back to my kind of pre my 2012, 2013 speeds when I was averaging kind of over 18 miles an hour on most rides, even up to 70 odd miles. But um, yeah. I'm, but the power, the power thing is really interesting. And so the, the, what's interesting is that the endurance level 
in the power zones is also kind of almost related to my heart rate zone too. So my heart rate zone is zone one to two when I'm uh, on the bike. And then the power zone is also zone two. The average power for that ride is also kind of zone two. So that's about right. And then when I do an indoor ride, I tend to do one of those a week, either a 45 minute threshold ride, which is really working at tempo threshold um, the whole ride. Uh, my average watts then are more like 160 to 170. So a bit. And what would your heart rate be in percentage wise? So heart rate then would be more like 70% to 80%. Okay. And then if I do a hit, which I sometimes do, it's more than 80 to 85%. But because of some genetic, uh, I didn't mention this to you, but uh, I also have a genetic predisposition where my heart uh, responds at a high rate to exercise. And you have to be a little bit careful with over egging it when you're in that space because you are yeah. currently more at risk of sudden cardiac okay keep keep avoid that, avoid <laughs> yeah, that. Just, i don't yeah, want to do get, that <laughs> you're getting so many health benefits from like the zone two it's just so bizarre because it's almost too easy so when i've got clients in so i'm looking to get another couple of bikes and i've got this outdoor space because i want clients just to come in the morning and just use the bikes like without yeah. me training them hey just hop on the bike right. no brainer heart rate monitor be around here breathe through your nose chat to your friend do whatever just get 10 minutes to half an hour there's my son just popped in his one just line talking to myself um <laughs> and then um quickly check time no um so yeah, I just want them, I just want people to come in and get three to four times a week if they can, you know, if they can get once, great, but three to four would be would be ideal of just 20 minutes to an hour, whatever they want. Well, I can really recommend the stages bikes. And if you need yeah. a contact there. Okay. I, we're going to go the, with the Concept 2 bikes. They're, oh, on, they're on order. Yeah, they're, I, I love them. They're great. We have all the Concept 2 equipment and we have like leaderboards. We've got a couple of world records in the gym okay. for people on, on the skier because we're, we're, Oh, four people like the skier and they all have good records everyone else hates it right um excellent so so we're trying to push that so it all connects and it's, there's like a leaderboard and you can kind of see where 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 you're at with with things um so the zone two is great and has your zone two like your heart rate stayed the same but your actual wattage increasing over time yeah my so my wattage well my wattage is in it, it decreased a bit and it's increasing a bit now. It's quite interesting actually. So um, my my average, um, my heart rate hasn't changed hugely, I suppose, except to say I wasn't doing a lot of zone one and two work prior to the beginning of 2021. So when I first started the journey, I was doing shorter rides. They were probably a lot more intense. My average heart rate and it was mainly more indoor at that point, um, were nearer sort of 125 to 130, which is obviously more 70 to 75%. So my zone tempo zone stroke zone three is 120 to 136. And then zone uh, four is 136 to 150. And then over 150 is zone five for heart rate. So more of my rides were in the higher end um, of the training and I was working probably too intensely. And it was really interesting because of one of the trainers at David Lloyd had said to me, you need to, to not have too much stress on your body. So, yes, you can do your half your half hour rides on the stages bike or your 45 minute rides, but try not to put too much stress on your body because that will cause your body to hold on to fat so in those few months, I just did the shorter rides and probably a bit more intense, actually, at that time. And then after Christmas, I switched and I switched to doing more zone one and two rides. So I did at least two 90 minute zone one and two rides a week. And then I used to do one a threshold and then three strength sessions, which were mainly body pump sessions, a few sometimes did a couple of extra strength sessions with heavier weights, but mainly the body pump, mainly 50 minutes, high reps. Again, heart rate zone was uh, zone one and two for body pump, but obviously I was doing strength training. And I saw a massive acceleration in my weight loss when I introduced strength and also um, 
started doing the longer zone one two and I was also walking a lot too I was doing quite a lot of walks again walking is in the zone one range fast yeah. month fastest month of weight loss was April this month we've just had God. and the the main thing I guess in that month was I did a lot more longer walks as well longer walks longer rides lots of zone one and two and I always used to think with the whole fat burning, oh, you're in fat burning zone. I used to think, oh, yeah, right. It's just such a nonsense. You're burning calories or whatever. But the truth mm -hmm. is you actually are in fat burning, a better fat burning zone. And I understand yeah. that more because the body will use fat for fuel when you sleep because it's got less, it's not massive demand on it. When yeah. you're in that intense zone, it wants carbohydrate because yeah. it needs fuel fast. So if you're yeah. exercising at a lower intensity for longer, stands to reason that actually that's going to impact and help your fat burn. Hundred percent, and that's I think that living testimony of that. <laughs> yeah, and I think if people want like a really simple takeaway, it's like if they just nose breathe when they're cycling, like need yeah. to mouth breathe, you're probably going past the test. Yeah. There's also an app called HRV Logger, and it's got a system on it, and there's a thing called DFA alpha one, which sounds way more complicated than it needs to be. And basically 0 0.75 will show your aer aerobic threshold. So if you're below that, so if say you're 0 0.6, you'll be, you're, you're kind of burning carbohydrates and you're coming out of that aerobic zone. So aerobic with oxygen. And when you start moving into anaerobic, you're going to need carbohydrates. And that's great because you, People, people should train both zones, but they don't need to do as much high intensity as kind of it's advertised, you know, because everything's high intensity and we all love to like sweat. I always call low intensity, you know, high intensity is uncool brother. Cause like high intensity is like people dripping with sweat. They got like glistening abs and they're like, yeah, you know, you're breathing heavy. So you must really be burning loads of fat. And yeah, you can burn fat later on. Yeah, you can. But you need to be an efficient fat burner yeah, cool. for that to happen. Otherwise your hunger and cravings are just going to go through the roof yeah. because your body's like, hey, we lost all those carbohydrates and we have to replace them immediately because the, the actual mitochondria isn't efficient enough to 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 like burn fat at rest. Yeah. And I find like we were talking about like you've lost twenty kilos and you wear weight vests. So when you're walking with that, walking is then maybe zone three for some people. Fast yeah. walking certainly is. Yeah. Um, zone three. So now you're tipping into carbohydrates and then you're like. So someone runs to catch a bus and they're overweight. And that's that little run to catch the bus when you're overweight. Then burn some of those carbohydrates and then you get this dip and then you get these cravings and then you get out of cycle. So the more kind of overweight you get, the more difficult the body has to manage itself. There's a, like a minimum requirement of movement we, we, we need. Absolutely. And you know, what, what, one of the things as well I've noticed is that, that, that doing the zone one and two and then having the one maybe intense session, my vo2 max has gone up um from 40 around 41 42 it would have been last october and it's now 44 which for my age group is in the superior awesome yeah, it's, it's in there you're, you're the top fitness aid five percent for your age yeah. and how you, how, year old <laughs> sorry how are you tracking that is that through the Garmin? I use or? that on the yeah i use my Garmin yeah. to connect with that i've got two garments i've got a Garmin edge for the bike which uh, is bespoke for the bike, is a bike computer, but then I've also got yeah. Garmin Phoenix X Plus, I think. So And that integrates with Lumen as well. Does that integrate yeah. well, or do you it, just use your phone and... No, it integrates well with Lumen. At the moment, it's pretty, it's only kind of narrow. It's a, it's a, it, it does the steps, it does uh, flights climbed, it does sleep, uh, sleep quality. Um, it doesn't, doesn't pick up the exercise sessions <laughs> directly um but i guess that might be a feature that they add at some point um yeah yeah but i love yeah, that I... you can compare your workouts in the lumen app uh you know in the tab where you can in your me tab and you can click on your measurement and you can say 90 post 90 minute bike ride and then you get all your readings for your post 90 minute bike rides that's really that's, that's really cool. cool yeah that's cool i i love the updates to Lumen, they're really regular with updates. So, so Lumen last year to this year year was really good when it started, but it's, they've done so many little things that made me so happy, like just li just little tweaks yeah. that are really good. I really love the fact you can just go through all your measurements and you can almost see seasons. You're yeah. like, oh, this was yeah. a bit of a four season. 
this yeah. was two what did you you know what did I do here that seems to be twos and ones and then you yeah. can kind of look back at your exercise history and be like oh this this happened and this didn't happen so I think like zone two training I think is something people just need to get into it's stress eating it's calorie burning it's yeah. fat burning yeah it's 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 movement on the system and it doesn't require as much rec- or any recovery it's actually a, almost a recovery tool so if it, I don't know you go heavy squats one day or like body pump and your legs are a bit sore it requires zero motivation yeah, so no. in, in February not February in December when I first started I was like I'm gonna do this as a kind of gateway to the least motivation needed I just hop on the bike and the wheels go round, and I'm trying to keep less than up and then you know I was you know my watts weren't anything impressive but now I'm 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 all right I'm pushing out watts at at my low heart rate I have lost my ability to push at higher intensities because I've avoided it yeah so my 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 yeah my anaerobic isn't what it was I did a 5k on the skier that was 20 minutes 50 and I'm I'm not there now because of the pace I was holding. I'm like, how is I holding that pace? I can hold that for a 2K now, I, you know, with a gun to my head. But my lower intensity. So when I did my marathon on the skier in December, I'd previously done a half marathon way back when. And I kind of like got to the half marathon, half marathon mark right about the same time. So I'm like, oh, my long duration is exactly the same. In fact, because I'm now going to do another half marathon on top of this, where that I would have had a sprint finish for that half. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, that's really good. Wow. But my kind of, my and my 100 meter time has gone up as well. But my my 500, my 2K and my 5K are not where they, where they should. They're not far out. Yeah. Not far out. But my recovery from them is, is no problem. Because again, I'm just, I'm avoiding these higher heart rate zones in in big doses right because i just i don't recover well from them i i'm like i'm great at the time but the next couple of days i'm i'm a little bit all over the place and i should probably maybe just fuel up crazy amounts before um so i think that's interesting and then same with my weight training so i lift weights every day and i only do two sets of each exercise or two working sets because i have a few sets working up to my working weight and so I get about 10 sets of squats, 10 sets of some sort of hinge movement, like a deadlift, 10 sets of some sort of pressing movement and 10 sets of some sort of pulling movement per week. But because it's split up into two sets, five days a week, sometimes a little bit over, I've got those sleep blocks in between. Yeah. So my recovery, I'm never sore, but my strength just is going up ridiculous levels. It's, That's great. Again, super easy. And it's, it's so weird because like my old mantra was kind of like, push it no pain no gain put in extra hours are you tired good that means you can push harder and it's like now it's just i'm all about just enjoy the process yeah um and brilliant and fixing people with burnout that's that's huge and i think that's what lumen's really powerful at doing if you let it absolutely well i think yeah yeah People are just trying to force. That's what I see a lot of people just being like, why is this not happening? And you can almost tell by the post. (laughs) Yeah. Why is magic not happening? I need magic. Yeah. Yeah, I know. know. What you need to do is go in a corner and breathe. And let's see if the number changes. (laughs) You're not allowing your body to do its work. So you're constantly burning carbs. And to lose fat, you have to burn fat. And if you're burning carbs and you don't have carbohydrates in your system, you're then burning something else yeah you know what are you burning i don't know but i would assume it's lean tissue yeah if you don't have carbohydrates to burn yeah so you're on this super low carb diet you're fasting these long periods of time you're doing high intensity exercise and it's like you're not matching the fuel to the workout and we're all we're you know all over the body's going help (laughs) yeah yeah so you just you want it to flow so would you say your entire process has been a nice easy flow yeah, and it's been, I suppose it's been, I, I've kind of added bits as I've gone along. And as I've learned little bits, I've added those in and integrated those in, you know, mindfulness yeah. and making sure that I have that rest time and not 
um, you know, monitoring my stress levels on the Garmin, monitoring my heart rate variability a bit. I mean, I, d I probably have done that less, probably done that less in the last month, but just really aware, really conscious. Now that I'm going back into a work context, now I need to just learn how to integrate and maintain and keep my healthy, you know, axes in the workplace. And now I need to apply all the things that I've learned in this kind of recovery time so that I can actually, well, one, maintain it myself, but also help others because there's so many people in my workplace that are living on the edge of that crash and burnout. And, you know, we, none of us know when, when we're going to cross the line and when, when we're going to be impacted in a way that is, yeah. is so negative. And I suppose I've learned those four things we mentioned at the beginning, nutrition, activity levels, sleep and stress. They're the four kind of fundamental pillars to our overall health. And we have to find out within each of those what is optimum for us. And those activity levels, you know, that, that is about intensity, it is about quantity, and it is about having an integrated approach. You know, the, probably the thing that's lacking in my exercise or activity levels is the whole stretching Pilates type activity. Yeah. I probably need to try and find a space for that, but... I don't think you need it as much. If you're like, say you're doing body pump and you're doing a squat, the barbell itself will push you into that deep squat. That deep squat, you got ankle flexion, knee flexion, hip yeah. flexion. You're, you're down low. If you're really like, uh, it, I've got, for me, I need 50 kilos on my back to get me to break below parallel. So just too stretchy. So like my, my mobility is okay, but like I need that weight to push yeah. me down or I need someone pushing on my shoulders like yeah yeah get get my hips down so when you when you're like lifting weights or even bench press just getting that if the barbell touches your chest that, that's going back okay so you can do it with with that um and again I think yoga and Pilates and things are all like now we do super fast yoga and Pilates you know, everything's like because it's what the consumer thinks they want you know the consumer wants the result yeah you know like the average person hey i want to lose weight and you're like well i want you to sit in the corner and meditate for three minutes no angus and I, I need to do something sweaty because i need to feel like i've worked but then you're going to crave pizza at the weekend and you're going to eat pizza and then that work gets completely undone what we want is like what you've done in april nine pounds is insane and you just walk and low intensity bike rides and then a few workouts that you've recovered really well from and you just coax the fat out it's just like yeah, yeah we're going yeah we're gone you know, yeah. every step you take is, is fat, you're breathing out, just yeah. going. Um, so I think that's a, I think that's a really powerful message because I think loads of people would love to have an April where they lost nine pounds. I know. I know I can't, I, honestly, I was like, I was surprised because I thought it was going to be the hardest month. Um, and, you, and you weigh, like, was that weekly? Was it coming off like no, I was weighing two pounds, two and a half? I weigh, I weigh myself every day. Okay. In, in in data shows that actually weighing yourself every day is really good for you. Yeah, I know. Uh, for, 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 for weight loss, which which yeah. sounds obsessive and people go crazy when I say just weigh yourself every day, but don't have an emotional attachment to the scale. Yeah, no, and that and I yesterday I weighed heavier, right? It was really funny. First day back at work, and uh, I weighed in and I was like a kilo and a bit heavier. And I thought, rubbish, that's a load of rubbish. I'm definitely not a kilo and a, and a half heavier. Got off yeah. the scales and thought, glad I didn't put it on my phone so that it uploaded to the phone. And this morning, it was back down. So it just goes to show you, you can have that. I, I, I'm the same. I'm, I'm like, I've been like a steady 103 kilos. And then I had this trouble last week. My lumen scores are pants. 104. And then this week, 102. And it's like, and again, that's kind of weighing myself every day. So I kind of go like yeah. that wee bit yeah. up and down. And then I hit that 104, which is like, oh, that's usually high for me. Yeah. And then boom. It's straight down. It's like that's stress and, and stress cortisol. Yeah. You will hold on to fat because it's it's it kind of it's it can be catabolic, but it can also store fat around the middle because it's there for like it's storing it for like the bear, but the bear doesn't come, so you just keep storing in, yeah. in the woodshed. And then you have um, it also helps you store water. So you know, when you get that little bit extra stress, the scale goes up, but then you see the scale go up, but then you get depressed. Because you know, Mother Nature doesn't know that that we get freaked out with the scale <laughs> you know otherwise it would have made a different system for us yeah. you know it's like hey we're just storing this little extra bit of water you might need it you know yeah. you're you know why are you stressed obviously you're going to need fuel and food so so cortisol is 
are kind of bad hormone now, but it's it's a survival hormone. It's it's there from yeah. It's it's there for our protection, but it's it's backfiring in this world of like you were talking yeah. about like processed food and our kind of Western diet. It's just and that's the other thing you're like really high refined carbs and loads of fat. And that doesn't really exist in nature. I think the only thing I can really think of is like an avocado that has a little bit of carbohydrates and fat in it. There's no other like natural food. Like yeah. you got, like if you eat meat, there's high fat, high protein in one thing. That's that's cool. And then you have like carbohydrates and protein together in like something like yeah. quinoa. But there's not really fat and carbs together, okay. these two energy fuels. It's one or the other. They're, they're rare to have together. Yeah. And, but that's what the Western, you know, cookies cakes you know something like a mars bar is 50 percent fat yeah just or 50 percent of the calories come from fat yeah, which is like you know and we think of that as like a, a carb and there's nothing nutritionally beneficial you know there are other chocolate bars that are, are just as horrendous and delicious you know yeah. that's the problem yeah. you know it would be amazing if they all tasted disgusting <laughs> and, uh, well I, I have discovered um i do like carb uh, green, uh carb killers have you seen them the white chocolate yeah. bars they are delicious and there's they're, no, they're, they're two grams of sugar in them and they're the, they're, they're all natural erythritol yeah. and all that stuff which has been great so i think you can really look out for products as well that help the journey well, we, li- we live in a world now where there's so many great products there's these yeah. really great high protein yogurts yeah uh, there's low-cal ice creams like halo tops like 300 calories for the tub yeah um, they do kind of teach you to eat an entire tub though yeah. So then the next time you go with Ben and Jerry's, it's a 2000 calorie tub. So it's like, cause you're now used to eating a tub. Yeah. Um, I think carb killers are, are great. Don't have three in a day. Otherwise you'll be running to the toilet, but really, uh, yeah, they've got the, the sweetener Lax- in it. It's, yeah, it yeah. has a little bit of laxative effect, but yeah. one seems to be great. And there's loads of really cool like protein bars. And then I really like the Ape Nutrition, like keto bars. Yeah. Um, and I'm not keto and I'm like, no, I know. I think that word that like I put that on my Instagram story and it triggers half my audience because they're like, oh my God, are you keto? When did you become keto? And I'm like, they're just nutrition yeah. for me. They're just fuel. Because I like if I'm gonna do like a bike ride in the morning or if I've got work, I don't want a big meal because then I'm like, yeah. I just want to sit down. So like yeah. I want 300 calories that switches off my hunger and doesn't make me want to go to sleep. You know, so if I have a massive salad, it's like, I just want to sit down and let it churn for a little while before yeah. I have to go do something active. So chucking 350 calories in is, is with with low food volume. I know loads of people, I want big food volume and I want that sometimes when I'm like, want to munch, but sometimes I want small food volume that isn't a nasty. You yeah. know, that's why like, you know, crisp and a chocolate bar can be really great sometimes because, you know, you can you give it to a kid and they can go run and play football and they're not going to be sick. You give them the same calories in a, in a Sunday roast, <laughs> it's like I can't move, Dad. <laughs> no, so, it's, so that's it. Is there anything you want to add on to the end? Um, I think if it, if you, you know, you're probably going to publish on the, this on your YouTube uh, channel, yeah. and I think if anybody's watching it and they're thinking, oh, you know, like I'm really active because of the cycling and everything else, I think the message is actually, yeah, I am active. But what I would say was I was very active before Lumen and before I actually lost the weight and the the components that have actually helped me to get down to a healthy BMI lose all the fat percentage get my whole kind of life back into a physical mental better place has been a balanced approach and has been an integrated approach so it's been working on each of the activity the activity level the sleep the stress and the nutrition all together and if you work on those four components and you can help your body to re- regulate hormonally in a better way, then if you need to lose weight, that's, that's the best way to do it. And your activity level could be just a walk every day. You know, just a zone one, two walk every day will actually make a massive difference. They do say that if you walk 10,000 steps a day, you know, in a year, you will, you'll lose weight. So you address your nutrition, you address your sleep, you have some level of activity and movement and um, you get the, the stress managed, then, then, you, then you should be able to lose the weight. Um, and if that isn't the case, and if you're struggling to lose the weight, I guess the other place you need to explore is your whole gut balance. And that's probably a, a conversation or an interview for another day. But you know, the gut, if your gut is not right, 
he, they call it in the book that I read, The Gut Balance Revolution. He talks about it being the garden for you, yeah. nutrition. And, he's, and he says, if the garden isn't well weeded and well watered, then you, your losing weight won't happen because your gut controls your endocrine system to some degree, your nervous system. And so your body just will hold on to fat rather than burning it and using it up. So yeah, absolutely. A fairly healthy gut. Um, and there are companies that will do that, that gut test. I had mine done with um, healthpath.com. They were very good. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the gut. It, it can have, you know, and, and even if people aren't like, oh, but if you're in a calorie deficit, you lose fat. But I think it's really difficult to get in a calorie deficit when you're, energy sucks because you're not stripping nutrition properly from the food and then the only nutrition you do strip from food is just pure sugar because it's really easily digestible by the body um, and then that puts your energy out and puts your hunger and cravings out and then you probably eat more than you think you are at that at that point so yeah getting the gut i've got a device yeah another device called the food marble and you breathe into it and it checks for uh, hydrogen in the breath which is your gut bacteria is producing the hydrogen and then it is in your gut and then it gets into your bloodstream and gets into your lungs. So if you're producing hydrogen, it means your gut bacteria is farting into your system because they've eaten something you're not digesting. They are. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it can be things. And for me, it was like something like onions, which is like yeah. super versatile food, but not so great for me. So I'll get bloating with onions, but just treating some of these things. And then I know as a performance enhancer, if I'm going to do something big the next day, there's certain foods I avoid because I don't want any gut irritation because I don't want any fluid because you've either got fluid in your muscle or you've got fluid in your gut. And if your gut's not dealing with an intruder or something hard to digest, not good. you wouldn't have a steak the minute before a marathon. You might have it the day before and allow it to, yeah, yeah. To, to settle down, but you really want stuff. And that's what ruins a lot of like long races and things is, is people's guts. People's guts give them, give them out at the end and you want stuff you've played about with that you can digest and again that's so you know one person it, it's a banana is great fuel another person you know and we know this for like peanuts you know peanuts can be great for one person and someone else can die so yeah. you know that's an extreme version but we, we've got that on and that's what i'm saying with individualization just finding what works for you anyway super nice talking to you yeah um, i don't know how i'll edit this i might split it into little <laughs> things but i might put it just up as one massive uh conversation to, yeah yeah conversation for people to, to dig in especially if they're new to lumen or they're thinking about getting a lumen and they're thinking about is this is this for them are they willing to do are they willing to use it as the tool i think it's really useful for obviously I, like i hate lumen's marketing where they're like everyone's like oh I just bring them to this and then i oh i'm gonna push this portion of carbs and i just find the adverts are really cheesy but the device itself is really good and it's really beneficial and I just, I wish people would, would like get that, um, that kind of element. And it's, I find it as a stress barometer, you yeah. know, like yeah. knowing your stress, like, you know, when you're stressed, but sometimes you don't know when your body's stressed. It no, doesn't feel right. like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and just knowing that and being like, right, today I need to chill out or I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to do my high intensity today. I'm going to, instead I'm going to yeah. do this zone two and get myself back into fat burn and see what happens and see how I feel. And that for me is like, yeah mood and stability and just holding on and just it's really good yeah so you've you've had massive success so i'm sure we will talk again i'm sure we will i'll okay. uh, so it's really good to talk to you thanks for inviting me to, to absolutely no problem at all let's go cool.